Uh, today, I wrote a letter to Canada's lobbying commissioner uh, after uh, reviewing the situation of Justin Trudeau's appointment of his new de facto finance minister, Mark Carbon Tax Carney. Look, this is incredibly concerning when we've seen what happened in the hours after Justin Trudeau appointed uh, Mr. Carney to this position. Uh, we saw that uh, Mr. Carney's um, self-described good friend, uh, the head of Telesat, received uh, a, a two-plus billion dollar loan. We've seen the announcement of discussions that uh, Brookfield, uh, Mark Carney's, uh, the company that he's the chair of, uh, now being able to enter into discussions with the federal government for a $50 billion pension scheme, so uh, giving them access to more than 10 billion Canadian pension dollars. And we know that changes to mortgage rules with Brookfield owning Canada's largest private mortgage insurer is going to uh, benefit uh, that company. And that's reflected, of course, in the six-month stock price high that was seen following that announcement. Now, we've asked the Liberals these questions. We've asked if uh, this has been reviewed by the lobbying commissioner. And at the Ethics Committee, we've asked uh, for Mr. Carney to appear at committee. And we'll be taking up that matter again today because the Liberals would not let it pass at, at, during previous discussions. And so perhaps today they will allow for some transparency to, to happen and for Mr. Carney to be called to testify at the Standing Committee on Access to Information, Privacy and Ethics. But, uh, but for now, we're going to look to an independent officer of parliament, uh, Canada's uh, commissioner of lobbying, uh, to, uh, to review these allegations and other that are, that are outlined uh, in my letter. So we have asked the Liberals if they cleared Mr. Carney's appointment and fundraising for the Liberal Party with the lobbyist commissioner, and they haven't answered. The Office of the Lobbying Commissioner and the Lobbying Act was put in place to address major, a major influence scandal of the last Liberal government. And frankly, this new situation stinks. The head of a trillion dollar everything corporation having unfettered access to Liberal cabinet ministers while fundraising for their party, while his uh, company reportedly asked for billions of tax dollars. The office of the lobbying commissioner, it exists for a reason and we've asked her to look into the situation because there's a lot to suggest that she should. Do you have any evidence that he actually does lobbying for Brookfields, right? Because that's the key determinant. As you know, there's a certain rule of presented percentage of your time that you spend lobbying that triggers the rules, right? Yeah, and, and this is exactly the kind of question that, of course, uh, the government's had the opportunity to provide an answer to up to this point. Um, they, they have failed to be transparent, and so this is why it's going to be reviewed uh, by, uh, by the independent officer of parliament, so she can apply the test uh, that you described and determine if there's been a contravention of the act. But this transparency is important. Look, um, after nine years of Justin Trudeau and his NDP Liberal government, we've seen the disregard that they have for the rules that are enforced by our independent officers of parliament, like the ethics commissioner, as an example, with uh, the prime minister twice being found guilty of breaking ethics laws himself. Um, we, we see that they, they place these, these rules uh, to the side when making their decisions, and that's why it's important that we have an independent review of it by the lobbying commissioner. Do you think okay. that as a motion for taking over all of the oxygen in the House, that there is good work being done right behind you? Look, the House is seized with multiple issues of liberal corruption that um, that actually don't even include the issue that uh, we've raised today, this latest issue. But uh, the, the most recent one to seize the House, that's one uh, caused by the Liberals allowing for hundreds of millions of dollars in uh, dozens of conflicts of interest to flow inappropriately uh, to Liberal insiders under a Liberal appointed chair who was found guilty of breaking Canada's Conflict of Interest Act. A majority of members of the House of Commons did vote ordering the government to turn over its documents uh, to the RCMP so that they can review them and, and, and take uh, appropriate decisions. But the government is in violation of that order as ruled by the Speaker of the House and that uh, matter can be uh, dispensed with very quickly. The government simply has to follow uh, the, the will, the order of a majority of members that were democratically elected to the House of Commons, which they were not doing right now. The other, of course, the other issue um, that is yet to be dealt with in the House is that of 
the, the other Randy saga, where we have the minister from Edmonton Center, uh, Justin Trudeau's liberal minister from Edmonton Center, Randy Boissonneau, his business partner, um, who uh, he was continuing to do business with, or there's evidence that, uh, contrary to what Mr. Boissonneau claims, that he was continuing to direct uh, his business that he had a 50% stake in while he was serving in Justin Trudeau's cabinet. Um, his business partner, um, you know, the speaker ruled, did not uh, provide the evidence and information that was requested him by, by a parliamentary committee. And uh, it's very simple. Well, the key question was, who is the other Randy? Because the allegation uh, that's been made by some is that it's uh, Justin Trudeau's minister from Edmonton. We need clarity on that because directing one's business from the cabinet table, of course, is a, is a, a contravention of the law. Um, and it's also inappropriate that that company, well, Mr. Boisson owned 50 percent, um, would have been receiving contracts from the Government of Canada, which we learned uh, through a belated release of information from, from Elections Canada. So um, these are issues dealing with Liberal corruption that, that have seized the House, um, and they're effectively obstructing uh, their, own, their own agenda, their own productivity. They can't get out of their own way. Uh, and, and this matter is one that, uh, that hopefully we can get some, some sunshine on so as to disinfect it and restore Canadians' confidence. Here, here. Yesterday, the uh, Conservative MPs voted in favour of a block motion calling for new seniors' benefits that would have the impact, if implemented, of giving $3 billion a year more to seniors. Uh, does that mean that the Conservatives are promising to implement that if you form government? Look, the number one thing that we've been talking about uh, every day, and we're going to talk about it again today in just a few moments, uh, and that's that the economic misery that's been caused by uh, nine years of Justin Trudeau and his NDP uh, Liberal government, their inflationary spending is having the effect of vaporizing uh, the, the savings, the pensions uh, of, of Canadians. Uh, Canadian seniors are now using food banks in, in record numbers. Um, the best way that we can address that in the shortest order is, uh, is what we've committed to do, and that's to axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. And the only way we can do that is by having a carbon tax election so a common sense conservative government um, can save uh, Canadians uh, from the economic vandalism being perpetrated by Justin Trudeau. Thanks very much for your question.